A turn in the war? Well, Ukrainian forces are now on the offensive as they fight to take back the Russian invaders in a major strategic city. The Ukrainians ramping up attacks around Kherson. That's a key city in southern Ukraine that fell to Putin's troops way back in March. Russian state media report the Ukrainians have been pounding a vital bridge with rockets. It's a critical river crossing. You destroy it, that would cut off a crucial supply line for the Russians and an escape route for Russian troops in Kherson, according to British intelligence. In recent days, we've seen the Ukrainians blow up Russian ammo depots near Kherson. It's suspected that they're using advanced long-range rocket systems supplied by the United States to strike those targets. Today, the Pentagon announcing it's sending to Ukraine even more of the HIMARS rocket systems, as they call them. Ukrainian officials say those weapons have been a real game changer and sent the Russians into what they call panic mode. Meantime, Russia is preparing to annex large swaths of Ukrainian territory, kind of like they did when Vladimir Putin seized Crimea back in 2014. That's the warning today from the White House. That includes Kherson, where the U.S. officials say the Kremlin has installed a puppet government. NBC's Ellison Barber spoke with Ukrainian villagers who sneaked out by foot and by bicycle and escaped from Russian occupation. Life here is hard but it's safer than where they were. When Russians came, they put white stripes on us, on our hands and legs. He tells us soldiers threatened to shoot anyone walking around without that white tape, and sometimes it didn't make a difference at all. There was a headquarters, an ammunition warehouse in a school. They didn't let anyone come even 100 meters to the school. A young boy came closer. He wasn't even 30 years old. A sniper shot him dead. Russian forces now control most of the Kherson region. Villagers we spoke to claim Russian soldiers no longer allow cars to leave. My wife said, well, they will shoot you anyway, so let's get out of here. Vladimir and his wife decided to bike. They pedaled across uneven terrain until they finally reached a town controlled by Ukrainian forces, Zelenodolsk. I'm just happy that I stayed alive. Thousands of people reportedly fled her son the same way. Most leave their bikes and try to move far away from the front lines. There are hundreds of bikes in a shed here. Locals say all of them were ridden by Ukrainians fleeing Russian occupation. On a lot of these bikes, you'll notice people have tied white rags to them. There's two on the back of this child seat. They are a symbol people hope that Russian forces will see and know that they're not a threat and allow them to get to safety. The town keeps the abandoned bikes, hoping that one day the owners will come for them and make their way home. Barber in Ukraine and Ukraine's first lady was on Capitol Hill today to make an urgent and emotional plea directly to our Congress. Olena Zelenska pleading for more weapons as the brutal invasion grinds on with no end in sight. She told lawmakers what we all know, that Russia's destroying her people in an unprovoked terrorist war and killing peaceful civilians in peaceful cities. The First Lady shared horrific stories of children slaughtered in Russia's indiscriminate onslaught. A warning now, most of you will find these images disturbing. Zelenska told the story of a four-year-old named Lisa, a Ukrainian girl with Down syndrome. Lisa's mom posted this video on an Instagram. You may have seen it of the little girl pushing her stroller to a speech therapy session. And then moments later, a Russian missile killed Lisa and severely wounded her mom. The first lady showed lawmakers a photo of Lisa's body beneath a sheet on the ground and the same stroller that she'd been pushing. The first lady spoke with NBC's Peter Alexander and described how the bloody war has changed her own nine-year-old son. What does your son dream of? What does he want to be? Obviously, he wants to be a soldier. He wants to be a soldier. What does that make you think as a mom? You know, before the war, my son used to go to the folk dance ensemble. He played piano, he learned English, he, of course, attended sports club. And now I cannot bring him back to doing arts and humanities. Everything, on, then only thing he wants to do is martial arts and how to use a rifle. The Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, watched the live broadcast of his wife's speech from Kyiv. He says he hopes it helps encourage U.S. lawmakers to increase their aid. 
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.